Yes. Good morning. With all due respect, um, Zwandile, the ANC Youth League has got problems of its own. Why have you decided to weigh in on the debate of the Public Protector's Office? Of what interest is it to the ANC Youth League? We are a political organization. We are concerned about the state of the affairs of the country. So we'll, from time to time, interact with issues of interest. You'll know that uh, um, the, the Office of the Public Protector, we've raised a, a number of issues uh, before. And uh, I think that uh, uh, the SABC as a report is one classical example. You know, when we said it before that uh, this office, one of its main problems is that, uh, you know, uh, it prepares people and, and it leaks information and, and we find it um, because, you see, there's, a, there's certain rules of engagement that the office will, will have to, to, to go, uh, abide by. In the main, uh, you will know, you would remember that, uh, for instance, uh, if you look at the issue of Nganda, there have been 40 press conferences from the Office of the Public Protector saying that we will release the report. The report has not been released. And in between that, there are a lot of leaks that are happening, and we are concerned about that. And we had to raise this issue using the SABC as an example to say that, look, what we saw as a leaked report is what became the final version, and we are worried uh, about the integrity of the office. Uh, do you have any proof that it is the, the Public Protector's Office itself that's leaking the reports? Because she might turn around and say, I have been pushing for uh, the release of the report, but it's government officials that are preventing me from doing so. Which government officials uh, were pushing for a rep a re the release of the report of the SABC? She has said so with Ngandla. We understand because one of the concerns parties was a, a ministerial a team. But uh, who was pushing for it here at the SAPC uh, in terms of the, the, the government? Is, is there any proof that it is her office, though, that's leaking the reports? Well, we can only assume that it's her office. That's why we're saying we've been calling for her office to behave in a manner that is befitting of that particular office. So based on assumptions, you've called her mischievous, you've called uh, her, uh, the, you've said that there's something wrong with the public protector, you won't be surprised at what will happen to her when her term ends. I'm quoting you here. That's quite a loaded statement. What do you mean by saying that you won't be surprised at what will happen to her when her term ends? Look, um, in, in South Africa, we've seen a lot of um, uh, um, uh, things that are undesirable. You know, someone who behaves like her we won't be shocked. One of the things we said yesterday is that we won't be shocked if she becomes a presidential candidate of DA. You know, if you are a woman, you are anti-ANC, you are a suitable candidate for DA. That's what we were saying yesterday. And her behavior, in our view, is a, is a very extreme behavior, you know. And I think uh, our view that we hold as the ANC would like that what is, she's one of the biggest mistakes of a democratic government because she does not uphold uh, to the values that created her office. And we're worried about that. What I'm worried about is that the attacks on the public protector seem very personal, that very little has been said about her work in and of itself. You say that she should read the Constitution properly so she could know what her mandate it is. Do you have a problem with her work itself, or is it her as a person? Let, let's, let's look at the is issue of the SAPC. There are a lot of problems here. Uh, instead of uh, her focusing on the problems here, if you speak to people here at SABC, one of the things you'll find that many people here are freelancers, uh, they've been working temporal works for over five, ten years, and um, uh, there is some work to that level to try and address those issues. But the public protector will focus mainly on, a, on an individual to an extent that all of us must now be. And, and the point we've made yesterday, we said that, look, uh, we, don't, we don't think that uh, we must allow mediocrity to run SABC. But there have been men and women of um, uh, high standard here. There was advocates, there were lawyers, there were doctors who were in SABC. But uh, we've seen much improvement uh, in the state of SABC. Not that we're saying that uh, um, uh, the COO uh, therefore must have a blank check. However, we're saying that there should be a lot of things that must be considered before you can just jump to look to focus on individual. We find that to be very personal to the COO. And we think that she has not told South African the real truth. You will remember that uh, uh, the COO has been here for almost 20 years. At some point, he was fired and he came back. And uh, the public protector is not the employee of the COO. The question is, who employed him? Why was he brought back without a metric? That's the issue. Why are you attacking the person, not the institution? Mm. Uh, just in closing, you've mentioned the SABC report. You've mentioned the Ngandla report. Anything else in her track record that leaves a bitter taste in your mouth? Everything that she does, we can't wait for her term to end. All right, well, that's uh, putting it to the point. Mzwandile, thank you so much uh, for your time this morning. Uh, Mzwandile Masina is, of course, uh, the uh, Youth League convener, ANC Youth League National convener.